This podcast is another in the series on periodicity. Here we are looking at electron affinity. Well, what is electron affinity? Electron affinity is defined as the energy change associated with the addition of an electron to an atom in the gaseous state. That is, it is the formation of a single negative ion from the element. Note that the more negative the electron affinity, the more energy is released, and the more energy is released, the more stable the ion would be, and therefore the more favorable the process is. If we look at a table of electron affinities for the first 20 elements, we note a few things. First of all, the halogens, fluorine and chlorine, have very large electron affinities. That's because those are very stable ions that are well known. It's also possible, you will also notice, to form a lithium negative one ion, a boron negative one ion, a sodium negative one ion, not something that you're very accustomed to seeing, but appreciate that those values for the electron affinity is actually very low, being less than negative 100 kilojoules, and so those are not common ions. But in the gas phase, they can be formed. A few questions. We can answer these using electron affinity. Helium and beryllium do not form stable, isolated negative ions. Well, why not? The hint, of course, is with all this periodicity to look at the electron configuration. Helium is 1s2. If it were to add another electron, it would have to go into the 2s orbital. That's at a second energy level. That is a lot farther away from the nucleus. It is fully shielded, and so the nuclear charge of the helium is insufficient to attract and hold the electron in the outermost energy level. The same is true in the case of beryllium. Beryllium, with its plus four nuclear charge, does not have enough of a force of attraction at the 2p level in order to attract that electron and hold it. So again, it does not form a stable negative ion, so you will not find an electron, electron affinity value for it either. Nitrogen does not even form stable, isolated N minus ions. Carbon does. Well, why? Again, the answer is in the electron configurations. If you notice, carbon has an empty 2p, x, y, or z orbital, whichever one you want it to be, where the electron can be held, and the force of attraction between the carbon nucleus and that electron is sufficient to hold it. However, in the case of nitrogen, we would be pairing and the added repulsion for pairing the electron in that p orbital is greater than the force of attraction that would be experienced by the electron from the nuclear charge, and so indeed you cannot make an isolated n minus ion. You can, however, make a stable O minus ion, and the reason is apparently that the increased nuclear charge in the oxygen atom is sufficient to overcome the repulsion in that second p orbital as you add the extra, extra electron. And so the O minus ion is a stable ion that can exist by itself. Interestingly enough, the O2 minus ion is not stable by itself. It is, however, a very common ion in compounds. And in the next chapters, we will come to understand that the O2 minus ion owes its stability to the energies released when lattices form as compounds are formed, but that's for a later chapter. If you look at the chart of electron affinity that uh, you can find in some textbooks, although not in Zumdahl, you will notice a general trend, and that is that electron affinity, with a few exceptions, increases upwards to the right, just like ionization energy. And so electron affinity is another useful periodic trend to explain some of the behavior of some materials.